guys, welcome back to Eleven Lessons Online. We are back with Macroeconomics. I am going to be moving on to part 4 of our current Macroeconomics series. And I'm going to be moving on to something that a lot of you guys uh, definitely want to know. Right? This is basically the bulk of what your economic analysis is going to be formed against, uh, formed on Okay, when it comes to looking at macroeconomics. So I'm going to be going through the equilibrium of ADAS. So this is it's very, very similar to your price adjustment process that you guys will have learned in demand and supply. I've already gone through that on my channel, so go and check out my micro playlist. Um, I've already gone through everything you need to know regarding demand and supply, how to find the equilibrium price, the equilibrium quantity. So this is no different, all right? Macroeconomics, it's just we're looking at the macroeconomy now. All right, so just take note that in macroeconomics, it's slightly different from micro. In fact, it's very, very different. Okay, you're looking at an entire economy. You're no longer looking at just one firm or an industry. You're looking at the entire economy. So you're going to be looking at the general price level, which is basically like the price of micro. Okay, and then you're going to be looking at real GDP, which is the quantity, okay, otherwise known as Y for national income. Um, and this is basically like the, yeah, it's your quantity in demand and supply. So GPL is going to be your Y axis. Real GDP is going to be your x-axis. Okay, we'll see how to um, look at the diagrams after this. Okay, so in the event that there's an increase in AD, means your aggregate demand, sorry. So when there's an increase in AD, very, very simple. It is similar to your demand and supply. Okay, when your AD increases, let's say due to a rise in um, exports, okay, due to a rise in export earnings, your um, increase in X will lead to an increase in AD. So when it leads to an increase in AD, AD will shift from AD1 to AD2. Okay, as a result, AD1 to AD2. As a result, this would cause an increase in your GDP, real GDP, from Y1 to Y2. And an increase in your GPL from P1 to P2. Alright, so this is essentially your economic analysis, and this is how you draw the diagram. Your AD will always try to start, okay, below full employment. Okay, remember that this section over here, the straight line, okay, it's below full employment. Okay, moving up here is where it is at, uh, nearing full employment, and up here is where it is at full employment. So we always start from roughly below full employment towards nearing full employment, right? Because not all your resource, uh, resources have been fully utilized yet. Alright, so this is how your uh, words work, how, how it will look like in words. So a rise in AD from AD1 to AD2 due to an increase in export earnings, right? Producers will increase production, okay, in order to increase the total value of goods and services. Hence, this will cause an increase in real uh, income or real GDP from Y1 to Y2. Okay, so in order to produce this higher real national output, right, because of a higher output due to this increase in export earnings, okay, firms would need to hire more workers, okay, more factors of production in order for them to actually um, cope with this increase in quantity. So this would cause the economy to hence move closer to that full employment level, which is the top part of that AS curve. Okay, that is where it is near uh, at full employment. But it's not exactly up there yet. Okay, once it reaches up there and there's an increase in AD, it will result in um, inflation, which we will learn later on. Okay, so for now, just take note that it is from below to nearing full employment. That's the increase in AD over here. All right, so then a 4 in AS is also similar. In this case, we're looking at what happens if, let's say, there's an increase in cost of production. So an increase in cost of production would cause your short run AS to fall. So it will shift from, in this case, AS to AS um, with this complement sort of thing, okay, AS uh, prime. So it will shift inwards like that. So when it shifts inwards, this would cause your real GDP level to drop, falls from Y1 to Y2, and your GPL will increase from GPL to GPL prime okay so there's an increase in your general price level and a fall in your uh, national income okay and this makes sense right because when there's an increase in cost of production the firms will cost i mean that because of this increase in cost of production okay the firms will pass on this cost to consumers in in the form of higher price goods okay higher price goods and services hence the general price level of the entire economy will also increase all right so a fall in um, as let's say due to um, lower wage costs. Uh, okay, so this is in the event of a fall in AS due to lower wage costs. Okay, there will be a downward shift from AS to AS prime. Okay, and this will cause an increase in your national income 
from Y1 to Y2 and a fall in GPL from PL to PL prime. So this is a different diagram. So this is not the same diagram that you saw just now. This diagram will look a bit different. Okay, it will be similar. You have got your GPL. You've got your real GDP. In this case, AS is here. What happens is that AS will just shift. So let's say that AS here, AD, it will basically shift to something like this. Okay, so this would cause a fall in your price levels. Okay, and an increase in your real GDP. So this is roughly how the diagram will look like. So it's just the complete opposite of this diagram over here, a fall in AS. So over here should be an increase, sorry, increase, a rise in AS, right? Okay, so what happens if you've got an increase in AD and AS? So this would usually happen in the long run, okay? Usually whenever there's an increase in AS and AS moves outwards, a parallel shift, okay, this is usually because there is an increase in productive capacity. So an increase in productive capacity is, it basically means that your full employment level which was originally there, has actually increased outwards. So that means there's an increase in your productive capacity. All right, so AD increasing in the short run and, and your long run AS shifting outwards, what will happen? Okay, an increase in investments, for instance, by firms on machinery, so basically capital goods. Okay, any sort of capital goods. In the long run, I mean, in the short run, it will cause AD to rise. Okay, but also in the long run, okay, AS can also shift outwards, okay, because these machines and this capital can now increase um, the overall production Okay, it can increase the overall output in the long run, and hence your capital stock will increase. Okay, and some more, um, some of these um, capital could be in the form of technology. So these will cause your efficiency of workers to increase as well. Hence, this can cause an increase in your productive capacity. So this results in a fall in cost of production, and hence your increase in productive capacity. So this is how you write the causal links. So these will increase the real GDP and GPL in the short run. Okay, and fall. Um, um, in the long run. Okay, the reason being is because when there's an increase in AS and increase in AD in the short run, okay, what happens is your GPL will also increase. Okay, but over time with your long run AS, okay, you realize that um, the long run AS will cause your general price levels to fall um, marginally more than the increase in AD in the short run. So this one you can just um, draw the diagram. If you want to ignore this whole part on the short run and just say in the long run, GPL falls um, and your real GDP increases in the, in the short run, it's also fine. Okay, so it depends on how you want to write it. Um, this is also known as sustained economic growth without inflation in the long run. I'll go through what economic growth is. Uh, I think it's in the next two videos to come. So don't worry about that part. Okay, but essentially when there's an increase in GDP and a stable but low rise in your general price level over time, okay, that's known as a low and stable rate of inflation. Okay, this would mean that um, your country is actually um, experiencing sustained economic growth, which is beneficial. Alright, so your exam requirements are quite simple. Okay, be able to explain okay, and draw the simultaneous change in AD and AS. And then after that, state the impact of the change of um, change in AD and AS on your real GDP and on your general price levels. And be able to identify the possible factors in the question. Okay, and decipher whether it causes a change in AD and AS or whether, I mean, AD or AS or both. So it can depend. Okay, so when about investments usually can affect both if it is investments in technology which can cut costs and can improve the productive capacity in the long run. Um, if not, it tends to only um, affect your, it could only affect your short run AD or short run AS. So you need to identify what exactly they are. Okay, so um, just on the first pointer here, I'm just going to uh, spend a bit more time real quick. Okay, to just go through how you want to be drawing your, your diagram. Okay, so firstly, you always start off by drawing your your axis. So let's say if I have an axis here. This is really cool, isn't it? I've got a ruler. How amazing is this? Okay, so I've got my axis over here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so my x-axis is always going to be real GDP. My y-axis will be GPL. Okay, so firstly, you always start off by seeing what the question is asking. Okay, we always start off by drawing first our AD and AS, so just a very generic one. So AS will usually look something like this. AS, one. And AD, usually we have it cutting roughly around near full employment. Like that. AD, one. Okay, so at this point, we can just mark out what our general uh, real GDP is, which is over here is going to be Y1, and we can mark out what our price level is going to be, which is going to be P1 here. 
Okay, so that's our general price level one and our real GDP one. So let's say if you see that the economy has has um has seen a rise, okay, in investments. Okay, what happens is that when there's a rise in investments, your AD will shift outwards. So AD shifts outwards, let's say to over here, to AD two. But at the same time, then they say, oh, these investments have been uh, improvements in technology. So you know that improvement in technology will usually, in the long run, improve your productive capacity. So this will cause your long run AS to shift outwards. So your AS will shift outwards and parallel, which means that it will shift like this. Something like this. Okay, sorry, it's a bit uh, shaky because this pen is very, very thin. Okay, but essentially it'll shift like this. So it'll shift outwards like that and AD will shift up this way. So this means that there has been an increase in AD, AD and an increase in AS. All right, so what happens now is that then you can start to plot. Okay, so this was your Y1 and P1. So now we look for our Y2 and P2. So you look for the part where the new AD curve intersects the new um, AS curve. You'll find that it's over here. This is your new Y2. And your new P2 will be somewhere around here. Okay, give give or take, okay? So you realize that overall, okay, your general price levels has fallen and your um, real GDP level has increased. So from here, then you can say that this will cause an increase in real GDP and a fall in GPL in the long run. Okay, so essentially this one, um, it, I'm talking about if there's an increase in investments, okay, um, for long run and short run, then there will be an increase in AD and increase in AS. So always plot them one by one, and after that, figure out where the new equilibrium price, which is your equilibrium GPL, and the equilibrium real GDP is at, and then you should be fine. All right, so that's how you draw your, your curves, your equilibrium for ADS. It's actually much easier than your demand and supply, okay. Uh, so that is really all you have to know for your basic, um, economic analysis for this entire macro syllabus. So if you did enjoy this video, okay, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out a lot. As well, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. And do subscribe, okay, if you enjoy this. Um, I mean, if, you have, if you've been enjoying whatever content I've been releasing, you know. And uh, if you have any questions or, I mean, any, any, sorry, any videos that you want to see, okay, leave it in the comment section as well. And I will try to produce that video for you guys as well. All right, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye.